Hey, I'm Kayvon, CEO and founder of Bells of Steel. Hey, and I'm Brian, uh, CFO and Kayvon's business partner with Bells of Steel. Yeah. I started this company uh, back in 2010. Um, I was working at a fitness equipment store while doing uh, night classes for my business degree. Uh, and I had been training, uh, lifting weights for about 10 years. Um, and this was, a, and in 2010, this was kind of like the rise of the internet and like the rise of functional uh, fitness. Uh, and I had always kind of like trained, you know, I didn't really know what I was doing. Um, just do like kind of bodybuilding stuff that I would read in magazines. Um, and this is when like, yeah, the alternative training really started to, to get out there online. So I first got a doctor and with this uh, uh, kind of free weights, more free weight style training, getting into kettlebells. Um, and I was training with kettlebells and that led me into uh, a whole rabbit hole of the world of uh, strength sports. Uh, from there I got into, I got really big into Joe DeFranco. I don't know if there's any old school YouTube people on here, but Joe DeFranco was this trainer out of New Jersey. He had this like uh, closet gym in some industrial park in New Jersey. And you know, he would do strongman Saturdays and chains and bands and all this cool hardcore stuff. Uh, and I want to do that and I want to start training that method. but. At the time, there was like nowhere to get this kind of equipment. Uh, you couldn't even really go to gyms. There was, you know, maybe one or two gyms in the city I lived in of almost a million that actually had bumper plates. Um, so I went to my boss at the fitness equipment store uh, and I was like, hey, we should start bringing in this stuff, you know, like there's nowhere to get it and I think it's really great. He said, no, I'm not interested. We can keep selling treadmills or whatever. But if you want to buy, you know, start your own thing, you can piggyback on my containers. I'll introduce you to my trusted supplier, and uh, you know you can you can import with me. So uh, I put in my first purchase order of like five thousand dollars, which was funded by, by student loans and the money I made at that uh, job, and uh, you know got my first order of kettlebells, bumper plates, whatever, and started just selling them out of the back of my Ford Festiva mostly Craigslist ads and just my own personal network. Um, and the company, yeah, it was just kept growing and growing. My friend introduced me to an e-commerce platform called Big Commerce is where we started. We started selling online as well. Uh, and, you know, it kept growing and uh, I ran into a pretty big problem, which is pretty, a lot of, happens to a lot of e-commerce people, which was I couldn't, uh, get enough money to get more inventory to scale the business up. Uh, my girlfriend at the time, my now wife, uh, would loan me some money. Um, but uh, we were, I was mostly spinning my wheels and no banks would give me any money. Uh, no, couldn't get any funding, couldn't, get, couldn't even get a credit card. So um, that's where I talked to, uh, that's where Brian came into the picture. Brian's, um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so I was working as an engineer, um, came on and I were friends from high school and, uh, you know, we used to spot each other at the gym. Um, he was, uh, he was an inspiration for me and, you know, he really helped me with my own weightlifting. And, uh, yeah, so one day he, he reached out to me and said, Hey, can you, can you loan me some money for the business? I want to grow it. And, uh, you know, I've been watching what was going on and like, it was a really cool business. He was passionate about it and it was getting a lot of people, uh, a lot of people were really uh, into it. And so, you know, I thought about it a bit and figured, yeah, I might as well. So um, I gave him his kind of first uh, loan and uh, just kind of watched the business from there for, for grow for a bit. Um, and then a few years later, uh, you know, kind of ran into some of the similar issues with not being able to scale again. And uh, yeah, maybe you can. Yeah. So Brian was, was loaning this money. I was paying it back and same thing. We kept growing and growing and couldn't keep up with the inventory. Uh, and I was kind of like frustrated. I, I wasn't like, uh, it wasn't, it was my full-time job um, for the most part, but I was still pursuing other things. I was playing rugby. Uh, I was, uh, you know, training lots. It, it, it was still kind of, didn't feel like a full, full-time job. Um, 
And so I, you know, was kind of frustrated, like, man, I can't grow this thing. I might as well get out. And so I went and tried to sell it to, I tried to sell it. <laughs> Nobody would buy it, obviously. It wasn't very, maybe very good business set up. Anyways, uh, and, and I was telling Brian uh, that I was trying to sell it. And he said, uh, you know, well, if you can't sell it to anybody, um, I'll, I'll buy in, I'll buy half of it and go in with you. So I was obviously unsuccessful. And then, yeah, Brian, Brian bought half the company. Yeah, yeah, that's right. And uh, yeah, it was, uh, I, so I bought half and then um, I just started using kind of my credit rating and, and stuff to start getting financing for the business. And I took out a line of credit on my house um, and then just we maxed it out getting inventory. Because uh, that was always a problem. We just never had enough inventory to keep up with demand and we couldn't scale fast enough. Um, so we put a bunch of money into inventory and, uh, and just started kind of focusing on growing the business organically. And, and you know, things kind of picked up for the next few years. Um, and at, at that point we decided, uh, um, well, I decided actually that, that I was done with, uh, with working as an engineer for a big corporation. Um, I was just kind of sick of the corporate culture and I really wanted to, to work on this business where we could really build it in our own vision and, you know, make what we really wanted to create and what we felt was, was kind of good for customers and people and, and that kind of thing. So. Um, so I ended up leaving my, my job and coming out full time and then, um, that, yeah, we really, that's when we really decided, okay, let's try to take this thing to the next level. Um, took and, a bit of a pay cut, eh? <laughs> took, I took quite a pay cut. Took a bit of a pay cut. <laughs> I didn't, I didn't collect any salary the first few years I was working with, uh, all the seal to just be able to put the money back in, um, and, and keep growing the business. And, uh, and I don't think Kayvon was taking a whole lot, a lot more than that because we, we were just trying to grow this thing, right? And uh, so, so that, that brings us to kind of um, close to the start of the pandemic. We didn't know it was coming, of course. Mm -hmm. uh, we decided that we were going to, yeah, like I said, kind of step things up. So we'd really max out all our credit. We got extra loan, got a lot of inventory in, um, and we'd also launched in the U.S. at that point. Um, and we were getting ready to do a bunch of marketing um, and especially pushing more in the U.S. and then the pandemic hit. So we were just very lucky to be in the right place at the right time with that. Yeah, it was, uh, you know, we were one of the lucky ones uh, to get that kind of organic explosive growth. Um, and like Brian said, we had we had maxed out all of our, our credit to get as much inventory. It just happened to be coincidence at the same time that the pandemic started. Um, after a while, we realized that this wasn't, this, you know, COVID stuff wasn't going away for a while. And, um, you know, we, we started doubling, again, started doubling it down. Uh, the business was doing extremely well, obviously. So the banks were able to, you know, offer us much more favorable terms. Um, and, you know, things were flying off the shelf. But uh, we, uh, we had the infrastructure um, set up for what we had been doing for the last, you know, whatever, nine years. Mm -hmm. And in the last year and a half, uh, the company has seven x So we've grown seven times. So uh, our infrastructure started to break. We didn't have enough people to handle all the email tickets and sales we were getting. Uh, we couldn't get our orders fast, out fast enough. We, you know, we were in a little 6,400 square foot warehouse we busted a hole in the wall and expanded to the other side and still couldn't keep up. We're hiring people, but we couldn't even hire more people in the warehouse because there wasn't physically enough room. Uh, so we ran into some serious infrastructure problems and it was, it was earlier in 2021, I think about January, uh, where Brian and I were just like totally burnt out. And I was talking to a friend of mine who also in the e-commerce business and he was like, well, you got, you got three options. Uh, you can, you can one, you can just stay small, you know, take two weeks to answer an email ticket. That's okay. And just focus on that. You could two, you could, uh, you know, sell the company, get out, or you could three, just keep hiring people until you don't want to quit your job anymore. So we took option three and, uh, we had to figure out on the fly, um, how to, you know, grow a team from six, uh, to 40. 
um, and, and build, you know, kind of the organization and company culture uh, that we wanted to, which Brian was a big driver behind. Yeah, and we really wanted uh, to focus on creating like a respectful workplace um, where everyone wanted to come to work, they liked what they did, um, they, at the end of the day, they could go home and um, they wouldn't be working all night, working extra overtime, all that kind of stuff unpaid. Um, we just wanted a company where we treat people fairly and treat them well, take care of them and they take care of us. And uh, that's definitely how it's worked out. We have uh, very, very low turnover. People like working for us and you see it in the results. Um, you see it in very good customer service because people care about the company and they want to do the best thing for us. Um, and, uh, and yeah, that's really been our driving philosophy um, as we've expanded. And uh, yeah, so far it's, uh, it's working pretty good. Yeah, um, and we took, we took that momentum uh, from 2020 into 21. Uh, we built out that infrastructure and, you know, for the first time in basically the company's uh, existence, we were able to start uh, marketing a lot and doing a lot of paid ads. It was something we'd really never done before. I just had always had this like relentless focus on uh, creating like really good, well-designed products. Uh, and they were, you know, they're pretty affordable. So people just kind of bought them. Uh, so we never really, again, like we've been talking about this whole time, we never really had the inventory to like stay in stock. So we took this momentum, we built up this infrastructure and we were able to carry it through 2021 um, and, you know, and into, uh, 2022, which is short, a short ways away, uh, where we have, you know, a great team, great infrastructure and all the product and financing we need to take us to an even uh, further level. So as far as what the future holds for Bells of Steel, uh, while well, we've been we've been expanding uh, domestically quite a bit, you know, we have this 30,000 square foot warehouse in Toronto or, or in Calgary. We're opening 15,000 square foot in Toronto. Uh, we got a, a 5,000 uh, warehouse and store in Indy, and then we have two distribution companies uh, in in LA and also in Indianapolis. Um, so more more North American expansion, uh, uh, as well as plans for a potential European expansion in 2022, as well as potentially further store openings in uh, North America in 2022. Um, are on, potentially on the horizon. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and uh, definitely if you're in Calgary, you got to come check out the showroom. It's beautiful. It's, it's really nice. And it's got all of our top selling products there. Um, it's been really cool to kind of see that evolution from when we had a dingy little area that people could see stuff <laughs> to, to having like a real uh, legitimate showroom. It's, it's pretty cool. And, and with, with the products too, this is my, my favorite part because I'm a real like product guy is we've kind of like gone from, you know, just like tweaking products and like making small changes to like full from the scratch CAD designs of our own products. Uh, we've got a couple of uh, benches that are gonna be here very soon that were designed from the ground up. We have a whole line of power racks we've been working on for a while that have <laughs> been in the works for like two years. Uh, so the act, and we're starting to do some manufacturing in house. We. Uh, we got some products, uh, top secret, but uh, some 3D printed products on the horizon. Um, working on some other some other projects in house as well. So we're starting to do some of our own manufacturing um, in this year too. Yeah, and and you know one of the other good things about this is we are still as we scale, we're keeping up with the same kind of quality control. We've always been uh, known for having really good quality products, and that that doesn't change at all. We've just been learning, um, getting bigger quality control companies and, you know, implementing some more processes to just make sure we keep uh, delivering really high quality products. And, and these new products, yeah, they're going to be uh, even better. It's pretty cool. Yeah. So hopefully 2022 will be uh, a bit more uh, relaxed. We can just focus on, uh, you know, what we do best instead of having to build all this infrastructure on the fly. I had, you know, I had my second child in May 2020 and uh, I'll tell you between the, the, the new baby and the company blowing up, it was, it's been a tough year, although I'm grateful. I, I don't know how you did it because I didn't even have any kids and I was just getting totally crushed. Yeah. <laughs> and the worst of it. Uh, and, uh, but yeah, I've got it and I've got a, my first kid coming up in February. So definitely yeah, 2022 is going to be 
talked about consolidating and just kind of improving and optimizing what we've already built. And focusing on my own training too. Mm. You know, training in my home gym that I haven't even been able to enjoy as much because I've been selling all you home gyms. But anyways, I'm happy to do it. Uh, so yeah, that's a little bit uh, about where we're from, um, and how we started, where we're at, and where we're going. So uh, yeah, thanks for watching and uh, let the gains begin. Yeah, thanks. See you later. <laughs>